Welcome to lesson 10 in our Hanna-Semitic movement patterns. In this lesson, we'll be continuing with some of the work that we began in lesson 9. We'll be working with supine arm movements. In this case, we'll be doing twisting actions, turning the focus of our attention more deeply into the body, into the inner workings of the scapula, or shoulder blade. Would you lie on your back, please? Here again, you can bend the knees up with the feet flat. And you can start by lifting the right arm up overhead towards the ceiling. And notice, before we do any movement, any, anything overt here, how your back and your shoulders feel against the floor. Compare the right shoulder with the left shoulder. And bring your attention now to the right hand. And Imagine that you are using your right hand to screw in a light bulb and turn the hand. And just see how far it turns without straining. And then reverse the motion as if you were unscrewing that same light bulb. Turn. And compare the total range of motion now let me interject here that when I work with people in uh, live groups, oftentimes people have their arms uh, at different positions. Try and keep your right arm positioned directly above your right shoulder. Let's try that again. Turn the light bulb in and unscrew that same light bulb. And go back and forth and do that on your own and do it in an inquisitive fashion. Right? What you want to do here is you want to be curious and notice what you can about the movement so that you can learn something about yourself. For example, would you see if you can notice where the movement begins? So you have an idea based on my guidance to turn your hand. So does the movement start with your hand? No. Does the movement start at the wrist? No. How about at the elbow? Well, if you're keeping the elbow fairly straight, not so much. Oh, as you examine the movement closely, you'll trace the root of the movement all the way back into your shoulder. Now, by your shoulder, I don't mean this part of the shoulder. I mean the back of your shoulder where the shoulder blade attaches the arm to the body. That's the real root of this movement. So as you continue to turn the arm slowly back and forth, rotating it this way and that, I want you to bring your attention to the shoulder blade. Now, as you screw the light bulb in, you may notice that the shoulder blade does one thing, and then as you unscrew that light bulb, you'll notice the shoulder blade doing something entirely different. Go ahead, roll the hand and the arm up and out, and see if you can feel the shoulder blade sinking down, depressing, as it were, moving closer down towards the waist, and even pulling in a little bit closer towards the spine, towards the center of the body. Now slowly reverse that, and you'll feel the shoulder blade starting to slide and glide higher, up towards the back of your head. Now, Keep moving back and forth slowly here on your own. The shoulder blade is a gliding joint. And lying on our back as we are, you should feel the shoulder blade gliding freely between your rib cage and the floor. Screw that light bulb in. Feel the shoulder blade pulling down, snugging on the right side, and tucking in and then very slowly release, 
And as you turn the palm out, you'll feel that shoulder blade moving way up towards the back of your head. And bring your arm back to neutral. And put both arms down by your side. And pause for just a moment. Close your eyes and compare your right shoulder with your left shoulder. And I'll be very surprised if you don't also feel a signif significant difference between the two shoulders at this point. Now go ahead and bring your left arm up. And again, very casually, just turn the left arm to and fro. Turn the palm down and away as if you were screwing the light bulb in. And then turn the palm the opposite direction. And now just as we did on the first side with the right arm, pay attention to this left arm all the way down the length of the arm to its attachment point at the shoulder blade. And feel how the movement of the scapula in back is what dictates the movement of the arm and the hand in front. Now as you turn the palm down and out, feel that shoulder blade gliding higher. And as you now turn the palm inward and up, feel that shoulder blade pulling down and even in closer to the spine. Turn it out. And turn it in. One more time. Roll that palm down and out and feel that left shoulder blade coming way up towards the back of the head. And then snugging down closer to the waist and even and closer to the center line of the spine. And come back to neutral. And relax your left arm down. Take a moment here, close your eyes, and compare the left and the right shoulders to each other now. Now let's have you bring both arms up overhead so that the palms are facing towards each other. And would you very slowly move both arms as if each hand were screwing in a light bulb. Mm -hmm. And now slowly reverse and unscrew that light bulb. and go back and forth. So you'll notice that the shoulder blades are performing in opposite fashions as the left hand screws its light bulb out, its shoulder blade snugs down. As the right hand screws its light bulb out, its shoulder blade glides higher. Slowly reverse. And back and forth. Now, let the movement of the arms begin to turn the body in one way or the other so that the body follows the arms. The arms turn with the light bulb unscrewing, and the body pulls to the left. Pause here. And then slowly unravel and reverse back to the other side. Turn the body one more time to the left. Uh-huh. And now very slowly come back around to the right.
and return yourself to neutral. Ease your arms back down by your side. Now close your eyes. Turn your attention inward. Pay particular attention to the flatness of the hands, arms, elbows, shoulders, and upper back against the floor. This concludes Lesson 10. Thank you.